hey, going live again. This is very frustrating. I've been having connectivity issues with my stream, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it's probably just bigger uh, load in the local internet in general. So, we built a classifier. The first one, eh, not great. Um, so we are rebuilding another classifier. I actually got a fresh copy of the data from Bert Fox. And this copy of the data actually has different features. So um, the, the target feature is trying to detect where somebody is from, right? Given their answer to this, this multiple choice dialect quiz. And the original data set that we had had um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, city and state combination and zip code. So that was the information that we had. Um, hmm, one sec. It looks like we are down on YouTube, maybe? I'm just going to keep talking while I um, butts around on another computer. Anyway, so the original data set that we had was information about. Um, zip code, which is the postcode in the United States, and city and state. And the new data set that we have have information on uh, live dashboard. Uh, the new data set that we have has information on the latitude and longitude. Um, okay, yeah, no, we're definitely live. Uh, and let me just pop up the chat so that I can see that as well. All right. Um, and close that and I'll just monitor two computers and that'll be fine. So the big thing that we ended last stream on was figuring out how to adapt our original problem, which we were treating as a multi-class classification problem. Um, and we ended up using XGBoost, which is a, a gradient boosting algorithm. It's a type of uh, ensemble model using multiple trees. And now we're trying to figure out a way to uh, adapt our methods to latitude and longitude. So the original method that we had um, as the output has a single category and as an input has all of these different things. Um, and I said that I was going to take some time and read some spatial analysis literature and I did. Um, and from what I can find, the specific tasks that we're trying to do, so having multiple categorical inputs and having the output be a specific um, added, like specific point in space is not super common. Um, and the closest thing I could find is something called a suitability analysis. Let me pull that up really quick. Uh, uh, Robbie says, I have an interview on June 28th on NLP. Uh, I hate text. Oh, I think text is great. Good luck on your interview. I'm sure you'll do uh, do good. So what did I say? Suitability analysis. Uh, and suitability analysis is a uh, not stability. Suitability. Uh, suitability analysis is a particular type of um, analysis. But, excuse me. It's a particular type of analysis where you are trying to select the best location for something given a number of features, right? Um, so you have information about um, residential zoning, above average crime rate, proximity to Title IX emission sites, above average, above average pediatric asthma rate, proximity to major roads. Um, I don't know what they'd be looking for with this particular thing. Something in Indiana, site selection model. Hmm. Uh, maybe like a park, maybe like a, a nice park for people to, to hang out in. Um, and so you take all of these pieces of information from various different maps, overlay them on each other and be like, okay, this is the one that is the best for us. Um, I think it's a little bit more of an optimization problem. And we are not really looking at this as an optimization problem. Um, yet. So I guess one way that we could do it is we could, uh, create sort of like a separate map for each of the features, overlay them all together, and then treat finding a specific speaker based on that as a suitability analysis. Um, the other problem I've had there is I can't find good Python code for it. It's all in like proprietary libraries in MATLAB and I, 
I did MATLAB in grad school and guess what I refuse I'm not using MATLAB again <laughs> I just won't um, it you know it's nothing against it in concept but a I think proprietary programming languages are not the way of the future um, and B I just personally don't like MATLAB and that's my own personal bias so I'm doing a lot more thinking about it and uh, based on that one blog post that I referenced a couple times where they proposed that the way that this was being done was via uh, K-Nearest Neighbors. Wow, <laughs> that took a long time to come out of the soup. I think we can treat this as a K-Nearest Neighbors problem. But the big problem there is that we... <sighs> Okay, so our, our categories are like our input data is uh, text, right? So is it cleaned correct? I don't think that is the most recent one because this is not. We'd removed all the IPA as I remember. Uh, washing it with text. Oh, uh, we might have to go back and fix this at some point. Um, anyway, so we have the uh, uh, all of the, okay, yeah, no, we definitely changed some of these by hand um, and didn't the second time around, so I just need to go back and, and figure that out. Um, so we have all of the features here. So here we have like tag sale, garage sale, yard sale, garage sale, garage sale, yard sale, yard sale, yard sale, yard sale, tag sale, garage sale, yard sale, etc. Um, so you have all of these ways of referring to the same thing. And the problem with K-nearest neighbors and other spatial analysis techniques is that they assume that there is a dimension in space, a distance between how far apart these things are, if that makes sense. So um, we could just do label encoding. So we could say, you know, tag sale is one, garage sale is two, yard sale is three. But uh, we'd be including a sort of a bias that somehow yard sale is more than tag sale, if that makes sense. Um, and the other problem with that is that there's different number of answers for each of these questions. So I believe there's between two and nine answers, um, which means if you're treating answers as space, you need to um, you need to have some way of representing the fact that just because there's more ways of saying something doesn't mean that those things are further apart. Does this make sense? Um, so we can't do label encoding. We can do one hot encoding. That's going to make this data set enormous. It's going to make it so big. Because <sighs> it's, it's going to, I think, probably like quintuple the number of features that we have. But also, I don't know that that's bad for spatial analysis. Uh, New York Stock Exchange Wall Street Journal says, any live coding sessions planned for BERT model? Um, not just at the moment. So for, we've been working on this particular project for quite a while. Um, and in general, for the types of practical applications that I'm doing in my live coding, BERT is not a great choice. Um, just because it's really big and really slow and I mean you can use it in a virtual assistant or a chatbot but you're going to introduce additional latency um, and what we found and the Rasa research team has found actually is that um, really big language models don't necessarily perform better. So the, the model that we recommend is actually called Convert. So it's very similar. It's a transformer model, but instead of being sort of like a fill in the blank, pick the next word type of model, it's um, designed to, it was trained by selecting the correct next response in a conversation. So it was trained in the conversation domain, just in English, I should say. Um, and uh, we found overall much, much, much better results with that model than BERT in general. So just to, uh, to to answer why the answer is no and probably will remain no. 
Mm. Okay. So. Yeah, let me take notes actually on the on the different things that I'm thinking about here. So um, what we want to do is we want to take in text and return latitude and longitude. We may need to do some label encoding and save the encoder. Um, uh, let me do a section here that says picking model. This may be more of a more of a planning session, but especially since I've already built one bad model. <laughs> I'm not super interested in building a second model that doesn't work, right? I'm willing to spend the time and really think about it and talk through my options and pick the best one. So, um, uh, and actually I'm gonna, there we go. Oh, I have a section for this. Uh, so, uh, Amir Kelly last time suggested KNN on the non-geographic features and then doing a majority vote for the actual latitude and longitude. Um, my, I, I mentioned this yesterday, my big worry about that is that um, because latitude and longitude are like points, if you end up with something where there's like two points and the, uh, they're equally weighted and you, you know, you need to average to get into the middle, um, you, you might end up in the middle of nowhere, right? You might be like, this person is from the middle of Lake Superior, which is not a place you can be from in the U.S. Yeah, like I, I definitely know in some places people do live on lakes. It's just not usually the case in the United States. Maybe like houseboats on the, like right on the shore, but it's not like um, that big lake that I do not remember the name of in Southeast Asia. Ah. I'm thinking of a specific lake where people do live on it. Anyway, how about some coffee? So that's my big worry with that, but that might work. Um, other options, uh, New York Stock Exchange Wall Street Journal says, think should have a look at transformer models. Yeah, so transformer is just sort of the class of, of model. And there's a, um, uh, there's actually a video that I did. I can post it in the chat. Uh, just like, it's a, it's a little, um, introduction to the, um, whole thing. Intro video to Transformers. Uh, Canon could be expensive during testing. Am I right? Yeah, it could be, especially if we do... Well, okay, so I should say compared to what? So compared to XGBoost, I think it's probably going to be a little bit slower. Um, but in general, spatial models are much more lightweight than, say, big neural models. Um, so... I, this is not a place to use deep learning. We should not use deep learning here. That's overkill. We do have a lot of cases, but um, I don't think we really have like enough features to make sense for it. And we're still gonna have a problem of, um, you know, uh, dimensionality and handling uh, uh, beans. What am I looking for? Handling the encoding. Excuse me. So other options. So the ones that I talked about were uh, suitability modeling from GIS, layering maps, and picking best point based on them. Uh, and then I'm going to do biggest drawback if Ty could end up with nonsense points. Uh, and because we are taking the majority vote rather than the Euclidean center, I think that this is going to be a little bit mitigated, but I imagine because we're looking at the, we're looking at specific combinations of answers, it's very possible that most particular combinations will be pretty rare. Um, so I think we might end up with only having a couple points to look at um, more than you'd think. Uh, the suitability modeling, 
Uh, Divot73, what are we doing? So I am working on a, uh, a project where I have uh, a bunch of information about how people say things. So um, like, what do you call um, a, uh, what do you call uh, the thing where you sell your possessions outside your house and people can come and bargain and it's informal? Um, so you might say yard sale or tag sale or garage sale or a bunch of other things. Um, and I have a lot of information about the different ways that people say things and also uh, information on their location with latitude and longitude. And I'm trying to figure out, given a bunch of information about how a new person says things, what latitude and longitude do I think they're from? So we're talking about different approaches that we could take right now. Uh, so the biggest problem for suitability modeling, which we talked about a little bit, uh, and it looks like I don't have that tab open anymore, uh, is the fact that I can't find a good example of how to do it. I basically have to start from scratch, and I would prefer not to. Uh, can't find a good Python example. If anyone has like uh, pointers to that, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, seems to mostly rely on pro pri pro pri pro pri proprietary hmm? uh, software. Uh, and then the other thing that I was thinking about was Canon with. Do you remember what I, the other option I was talking about was another type of Canon. And I think the big thing that I was talking about there was one hot encoding. Which we could also do for this majority votes thing. Um, one hot encoding for each answer. Uh, biggest drawback would be um, would make the data is very will make data very wide and then biggest benefit handle scaling uh, New York Stock Exchange Wall Street Journal says interesting problem never worked with Latin long I don't buy really. I mean, I've done like a little bit of graphing. <laughs> like I've done some like map visualizations, but that's pretty much the, the extent of it. Uh, 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 so those are the sort of things that I have been thinking about so far, possible benefits. The other thing that we could do, um, and this might be nonsense, but the other thing that we could do is we could do two classifiers. Uh, two regression classifiers, I should say. Uh, one for <laughs> latitude and one for longitude. Uh, Shane John Paul says, when did we switch to Python? Uh, I've written zero code yet, but so the reason I switched to Python here is I prefer R for data cleaning and manipulation. Um, right now we're building a classifier um, and the way that you use a, a machine learning classifier with a Raza assistant is you have the Raza server that's running the um, the conversation part, figuring out what the person says, figuring out what to say in response, and then you have the um, uh, what we call an action server, and the action server can run any arbitrary code that you want to your assistant to rely on. Uh, but for this in particular. Um, I am using Python because we have a Python SDK, and I mean you can you could of course buy your own SDK. We'd be be happy to uh, to have that. It is an open source project, but um, I 
don't really want to write an RSDK for Python, uh, for Python, for Raza. Um, so I'm not going to. Uh, so I'm going to uh, train a model. I'm going to save the model somehow. Uh, last time I think I did a binary. This time I think I'm probably going to do uh, an HD5 or some sort of hierarchical model. Um, and then I will read in the model. And when the user is using the assistant, uh, they are talking back and forth. And then I'm collecting all their answers. And when it comes time to tell them, you know, the their answers on the quiz, uh, the results on the quiz, uh, I'll take those answers, I'll encode them using the encoder I've saved out, I'll classify them using the classifier that I've saved out, and then I'll return those results to the user uh, via the Raza server. So a little, little architecture overview there. Uh, New York Stock Exchange, Wall Street Journals, by regression classifier, do you mean SVM? Uh, I mean, we could use anything, right? Um, I would probably actually use Listen, I really like XGBoost. Uh, and XGBoost has the uh, additional benefit of not assuming that things are gonna be contiguous like an SVM does, so it can uh, handle a non-contiguous um, decision region because of the ensemble. So decision trees usually can't, no, yeah, decision trees can handle non-contiguous non, uh, uh, non reason. Non Decision trees can handle non-contiguous regions because the first one might like split it this way, um, and then the second one might split it this way, and then you might have this and this panel being given the same classification, and these middle two panels being given the same classification. So because it's being bisected multiple times, or not necessarily bisected, but cut in parts multiple times, um, you can absolutely have a non-contiguous region. So I probably wouldn't use an SVM for this because so this approach has the benefit of being easy for me to implement. Um, and actually, let me let me write that down. Because <laughs> uh, I'm very familiar. Biggest benefit, easy for me to do. Um, the drawbacks. I think this is probably a very bad way to do GIS. I think this is probably a very bad way to handle spatial data. Um, if the US was a country that, or I was working with a country that was very like long and narrow, like if this was for like, I don't know, Argentina, um, I think this might be a reasonable approach, but the US is sort of like rectangular-ish shaped. It's sort of, um, I don't know, trapezoid maybe. Um, this might be ridiculous because the most likely latitude and the most likely longitude may together end up with a single location that is not the most likely location overall, if that makes sense. There may be like some dependency between them that this modeling approach wouldn't catch. Um, but again, would be easy for me personally to do so. And that's not nothing, right? <laughs> Um, uh, prob of, uh, what would you call that? Coordinates? Um, by prob here, I mean probability. Right, so classic, like, uh, Simpson's paradox is specifically for trends, but basically like a Simpson's paradox where the, uh, the joint probability and the, uh, what would that be, the conjunct probability have different meanings. <sighs> Man, I wish I had taken the GIS class. <laughs> in grad school instead of all that no no i'm really happy i took a lot of bayesian and uh um causal modeling classes it's actually been very helpful and really gave me a lot of tools for thinking about things <sighs> hmm. And actually, I'm going to get rid of mine because this is basically the same thing as that. Um, 
and then uh, need to one hot encode to make sure scaling is consistent tint and that will make data very wide. Uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange says, in what are the ways the latitude and longitude types influence the forecasting power of the model? So, hmm. Um, I will say this is not uh, this is not going to be a forecasting model. So forecasting specifically is time series analysis. Um, just just it's just to be exact, to make sure that we're on the, the same page with language. Um, so forecasting is like what's going to happen next. This is more um, more sort of traditional classification. Um, the yeah, so the, the things about latitude and longitude are, it's a way of representing space. Um, and there's a lot of special considerations when working with map data and space data and like representations of real places that I know some of, but not a lot of. So this isn't really my area of expertise. I'm more of a, more of a text person. Um, so that could be, could be a problem here. Uh, Robbie says XGBoost uh, doesn't have variable importance. You can get variable importance from XGBoost. It's um it's one of the the post hoc visualizations. We'll show XGBoost. Uh, H2O AutoML also shows you variable importance. Uh, yeah, I guess I could use AutoML. But again, I'm still gonna have to make those decisions about sort of family of model and the pre-processing that I want to do. Um, you, you can't, unfortunately, there's no such thing as automatic pre-processing still. Uh, you still got to do that with your, your hands. Uh, H2O is better at replacing missing values. I don't believe we have missing values. Um, I think we've already removed those during, during data cleaning. So I think we're good on that, uh, that end. Although I, I was like, I do like H2O AI. Um, those have a lot of great folks, uh, great folks working there. Uh, Paul, who runs um, Women in Data Science and Machine Learning, uh, Hyderabad, that I did a talk at a while ago, Aaron Liddell, of course, um, Ryan Chesler, a bunch of good folks. This is dumb, right? This is a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. This seems like, my intuition is this is something that seems feasible on paper, but is absolutely ridiculous in practice. Um, so I think that we're not gonna go with this one. I think this one is probably gonna be. And if I find out that actual GIS people do this, I'm gonna feel real dumb, but that's okay. Uh, oh. oh, no, I wanted an, an X, not a check. Well, uh, hmm. Uh, I don't know how to not make that be a, I want, I want that to be an X mark, not a check mark in that box. There we go. <laughs> uh, that is close enough. Um, and this suitability modeling, it might be good, right? This might be a very reasonable way to do this, but I can't find, I'm not saying they exist, I'm saying I can't find good ways to do this in Python. Um, if anyone has any leads, please let me know. Um, and this is that, that map-based technique where you sort of like overlay multiple maps and then based on each of those maps all together, you pick the best place. And it's um, like I mentioned, it's a little bit more from optimization research, and I am not super familiar with optimization. Like, I've gone to a couple talks is sort of my my level of comfortability with optimization. So I don't think I, again, I think this would just be hard for me to do, even if it might be a good approach. So I'm going to say no as well for this one. Um, so I think we're going to go with, um, go with this. So we're going to go with uh, Amir Kelly's suggestion. Um, 
So doing one hot encoding, which is going to make the data very wide, uh, should be, shouldn't be super slow, um, I don't think. Because uh, in general, spatial methods tend to be pretty fast. So CANNs, SVMs, anything where you have like a, a multi-dimensional space and you're dividing it and picking points in it tend to be um, tend to be pretty lightweight in general. Uh, yeah. All right. So I think that I have convinced myself that this is uh, a reasonable approach. And let's start on our data cleaning because I need to go back to uh, to this and figure out why uh, the data cleaning, what I did here is not working. Um, so this should say boy and lawyer instead of with ah as in saw lawyer. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Lawyer, uh, with boy as in boy lawyer. I also do not want, uh, uh, these characters in my bot cause they're going to render weird if there's not good font support wherever I host it eventually. So, yeah, um, I think the first thing we need to do is go through and remove points outside the US. And I said this last time, but I'm pretty sure I don't need to. I guess we can still check for missing data. So the first thing we need to do is remove points from outside the US. So data cleaning, remove points from outside the US. So what we need to do is we need to geocode, right? Reverse geocode, which way is it? Um, Ravi says, is one hot vector the same as one hot encoding? Um, I would assume so. I don't know, I'd, I'd probably Google that just to make sure. Uh, reverse geocode Python. Well, that's right, we had, uh, we had a library, right? That uh, reverse geocoder, if I'm remembering correctly. So let's give that a shot and we should be, excellent, we are in a conda environment. Uh, what was the specific thing we were looking at? Something about geo, reverse geocoder. Reverse geocoder. Uh, and reverse geocoding is going from the uh, coordinates to the place. So here's the duke. Here's the sort of thing that that's going to look like. Uh, we're going to look at the coordinates and then they're going to return information back. Oh, I see. Okay, this is this is two locations. I was like, how did one set of coordinates return two locations? Was it not sure if there were latitude, longitude, longitude, latitude? So, okay, I think we're good there. Uh, successfully installed. Fantastic. Uh, so for our data cleaning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to